This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Dunn, and welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, Landy McDonald, March 7, 1989, reached the unattainable mark of 500 goals. I think it was 500 goals because I know that he got a thousand points at the same time. But yeah, it was his 500 goal. Lionel McDonald had an amazing 1989. We'll talk about that more. So, just to let you know, Lionel McDonald is 68. Um, he used to play for the Leafs, the Colorado Rockies, a.k.a. the New Jersey Devils. Well, when they, before they became the New Jersey Devils. And the Calgary Flames. He played 1,100 plus games in a 16-year career. And he got his 500 goal and 1,000 point in the same year, 88-89. And he holds the record for most goals in a season by a Flames player, 66, in 1983. Hmm. Lanny was picked fourth overall in the 73 NHL draft, and his average was an offensive forward with three consecutive 40 goal seasons. Unfortunately, he was traded to the Colorado Rockies because of Harold Ballard and Punch and Black's spite for Daryl Sittler. He spent three years with Parts of three years in Denver, and then he was sent to Calgary in 1981 when he spent the remainder of his career. And he was one of the co-captains for the Flames in the 89 Stanley Cup winning season. McDonald won the Master Tune in 1983, and he even won the King Clancy Memorial Trophy for his leadership and humanitarian presence. His number nine was retired in 1990 by the Flames, and he was actually inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1992. So he had a passion. He's from Hannah, Alberta, and all that. He wanted to play. He almost played for the Medicine Hat. Yeah, he played for Medicine Hat, and he had a good season for Medicine Hat. In fact, my grade 12 English teacher, her ex husband, was one of the Medicine Hat. Um. Um, wingers. So anyway. Lanny McDonald was considered a top prospect and all that. But anyway, Vancouver had the third overall selection in the NHL draft and almost drafted him, but Lanny said that he would rather go to the WJ than Vancouver, so the Leafs got him with the fourth pick. I'm actually surprised. I mean, like, I'm just going to take a look at the 73 NHL draft. So, the Islanders had the first pick and took Danny Pot, then perfect. The Atlanta Flames went second with Tom Lysiak from Medicine Hat, the same team as Lanny was, I guess, his um, line mate. Dennis Fervengart, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but he was the guy who went to Vancouver instead of Lanny McDonald, and then Lanny fell to the Leafs. Okay. So, anyway, yeah. And McDonald. Could have went to Cleveland to play for the WHA, but he basically chose to play for the NHL. You know, he, he did pretty well for himself. He was the hero in 1978 for the Leafs in the quarterfinals against the up-and-coming New York Islanders team. I rather think that spot that was on the Islanders team. And he scored the winning goal in Game 7 in overtime. It was amazing. Lenny actually broke his wrist and his nose. That's why he was wearing a face shield when he scored his famous Game 7 goal, and that, and the Leafs got to the Stanley Cup semifinals for the first time in 11 years. Sadly, though, the Habs would sweep them. And then, of course, you know, he left Toronto because of Punch and Black's stupidity. All that. And Black traded McDonald to Colorado December 28, 1979, for Joe, alongside Joe Quenville, who would be better as a coach than a player. You know, traded for Will Paymont and Pat Hickey. Pat Hickey? I don't I thought it was someone else that went to Toronto instead of Hickey. I know Paymont went to Toronto, but basically, McDonald was devastated by the trade and all that. So basically, he blamed Imlac for everything. And Sittler basically resigned as captain and all that. There was another power struggle problems in Colorado. 
sympathetic to the fact that his wife was less than two weeks away from giving birth. Head coach Don Cherry, when he coached the Rockies, gave McDonald permission to leave the team on off days to return to his wife in Toronto. But he did so without getting the approval of GM Ray Marin. And all that. Despite that, Lanny would score 35 goals as a member of the Rockies and did pretty well. And the Leafs decided they wanted to get Lanny back. The Rockies disputed that any negotiations had taken place, and Ballard quickly apologized for the news story because they thought that Colorado was going to fire tamper, tampering charges against Ballard. McDonald scored 81 points as the Rockies' captain. And basically, Cliff Fletcher tried his best to get Lanny McDonald as a, as a manager for the Atlanta Flames back in the 70s. So he finally got Lanny McDonald. McDonald was shipped alongside a draft pick to Calgary for Bob McMillan and Don Lever. And of course, Colorado the next season would move to New Jersey. Lanny was upset being traded because he said that the worst team in the NHL had rejected him. And he felt the pressure of replacing two popular ex Flames in McMillan and Lever. But he did. Prove everyone wrong, saying that he like he was a Calgary superstar and the fans loved him for it. McDonald scored the Flames' first goal at the Olympic Saturdome. Well, they play at the Saturdome now, but well, in October 1983, and basically he looked good for Calgary and all that. Lanny McDonald was responsible for chasing Steve Smith around the Edmonton net. In Game 7 of the conference semifinals, that was when Steve Smith banked the shot off to Grant Fierce Pat and an into the net. McDonald was actually credited with that goal. However, it was changed to Perry Barrosan because Barrosan was the last one to touch the puck. So anyway, Calgary fans went wild. Lanny was hoping for a Stanley Cup, even though... He has misgivings. Unfortunately, though, Montreal took him out in the finals in five games. McDonald had some problems. So basically, March 7, 1989, 32 years ago, he scored his 1,000th point. I said 500 goals. Sorry, I screwed up. He scored his 1,000th point with a goal against Bob Asuna of the Jets. And then two weeks later, exactly two weeks later, on the 21st, he scored his 500th goal against Mark Fitzpatrick of the Islanders. And it was Lanny's final regular season goal, so he was at 500 goals legitimately in his regular season career. At 36 years old, the 89 playoffs were basically his best chance to win the Stanley Cup and his last chance. The Flames took care of the Canucks, although it wasn't easy. Vancouver almost upset Calgary easily. The Flames took out the Kings, who took out their provincial rivals, the Oilers, in round one. They took out the Chicago Blackhawks to set up a rematch with the Habitants. McDonald plays game, played games one and two of the 89 finals. Unfortunately, he didn't play the next series. But Terry Crisp decided after Calgary went up three games to two with a game six at the forum in Montreal, he might as well give Lanny McDonald a chance to play. And so he did. And then midway through the game, McDonald served a, had served a penalty, but then he stepped on the ice to join Hawk and Lube and Joe Newendike in a three on one rush towards the Montreal goal. Lube passed Newendike, who saw McDonald coming. In on the right side, and he scored over Patrick Watt's glove to make it 2-1. A lot of people thought that Lanny McDonald was the guy who scored the cup-winning goal in Montreal that night. But no, it was wrong because it was 2-1. The score was 4-2, so the third whoever scored the third goal, which was Dougie Gilmore, was credited with it. Lanny McDonald was the first member of the Flames to carry the trophy. And, of course, he decided to retire because he figured that it was the right time to change roles. So basically, he was operations manager for Hockey Canada. You know, he had a good legacy in Calgary, especially Calgary, Toronto, so-and-so. But basically, Toronto, Calgary was where his stuff is there. He met his wife while playing hockey for Medicine Hat, married his wife in 1975, and still is with her. They have four children, two daughters and two sons. And yeah. Lanny McDonald did pretty well for himself. 500 goals, 506 assists for 1,006 points in 1,111 games. 
in the regular season, 44 goals in 117 playoff games, was part of the Canada Cup team in 76 that won it all. McDonald famously passed, was the last person to pass the puck to Sittler before Sittler scored that famous Canada Cup winning goal over the Czech goalie Sor Sorula. Sor Sor I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but anyway. That was that, and Lenny McDonald is a hero. His red mustache has been made fun of on like Air Force and a few other shows, but basically he's a legend. I know he's a Flames legend. I know he started a career with the Leafs, but you know, Calgary can have him. I mean, we have plenty of legends to go along. I'm Jeff Diamond. I'll do.